Please turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 5. This video is going to be a continuation, kind of an addition to the previous video that was done yesterday. <clears throat> in this video, I want us to quickly address euphemisms and also the cultic mentality and cultic behavior that is being promoted and instilled upon those who fall for the poison crown psychological operation, okay? It's a religion given by the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, the mother of all harlots, the mother of all cults, Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit order, okay? Proverbs chapter 5. We want verses 3 on to verse 6. Please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures. The scriptures we will be looking at, okay? Please follow me along. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 3 on to verse 6. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Strange woman. Oh, like Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Drop as a honeycomb. Very sweet. Oh, sweet words. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Smoother than oil. Uh, oil penetrates many things, okay? Oil is a lubricant, hence smooth. Smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood. I've heard it say that uh, Chernobyl in Russian means wormwood. I've heard that. I can't verify that, but... But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Movable. <laughs> her symptoms are movable, that thou canst not know them. <laughs> Her ways are movable. Kind of like a, the wave of the sea, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay? Unstable. Movable. Not, but why is that? Because they're planted on sand, not solid rock. On that, go to Matthew. Matthew, good example of that. Her ways are movable, okay? Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 on to verse 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Jesus Christ is the rock, not Peter, okay? Jesus Christ is the rock. Peter is a small stone. And sand is comprised of what? Many, many, many small stones, okay? And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon rock. And every one that heareth these saints of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, a foolish man who says in his heart, There is no God, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. If the sun will make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Freedom, salvation, is in Christ Jesus. If you are not saved and you see this, there will be a link in the description box. Let us reason together. You and I. Okay? But what is very, very interesting, very, very interesting, her ways are movable. Her ways are movable. Very telling of Roman Catholicism. The only thing about Roman Catholicism that changes is that she, she has always been evil. She is Satan's church, ruled by her army, the Jesuit order. Okay, the only thing that changes about Roman Catholicism is that she gets worse with time. Always evil. 
always evil, always anti-Christ, okay? And it is the Jesuit order, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It is the Jesuit order that has instilled the psychological operation known as the poison crown that is going on today, okay? And you can tell by how they promote it through the media. Today, my wife and I actually sat and listened to news. Uh, oh, boy. Circumstances change, but nothing changes when you listen to the news. <laughs> oh, you know, we have sister, we have a dearly, dearly beloved sister and several brethren who give us information to keep us in uh, up to date on things. But today, you know, we had to. We kind of listened to the news. And, ugh. Oh, Things going on in Russia and stuff like that. Distraction. And also uh, here in America. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. You know, what they are doing is they are employing euphemistic or euphonic language. And a euphemism. What is a euphemism? What is a euphemism? Webster's 1828 Dictionary. What is a euphemism? Okay. Euphemism. <laughs> euphemism from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Euphemism. Now, a, rep a representation of good qualities, particularly in rhetoric. A figure in which a harsh or inde indelicate word or expression is softened, or rather by which a delicate word or expression is substituted for one which is offensive to good manners or to delicate ears. <laughs> euphonic or euphonical adjective. Agreeable in sound. Pleasing to the ear as euphonical orthography. The Greeks adopted many changes in the combination of syllables to render their language euphonic by avoiding such collisions. Hmm. So a euphemism is a representation of good qualities, particular, particularly in rhetoric, a figure in which a harsh or indelicate word or expression is softened. Okay? And euphonic or euphonical, agreeable in sound. You want to know the scriptural definition of that? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. You want to know this? To Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8, on to verse 11. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8, on to verse 11. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Oh, uh, sweeter than the honeycomb and, and as smooth as oil? Hmm. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Speak not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Oh, euphonic or euphonical, agreeable in sound. And the New Testament counterpart to that is 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1. Oh, not 1 Timothy, right? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. 
Remember, you and I as the Church of the Living God, we are ambassadors for Christ. We have the ministry of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation. Okay? I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. A representation of good qualities, particularly in rhetoric. A figure in which a harsh or indelicate word or expression is softened, or rather by which a delicate word or expression is substituted for one which is offensive to good manners or to delicate ears. You're going to hell! If the Lord doesn't save you, oh, you'll just be removed from God's presence. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Well, one way might not be good for you. There's another way for someone else. I mean, you can see Christ in Buddhism. You can see Christ in Taoism. Hmm? Yea, hath God said? I mentioned this devil yesterday, George Carlin. He did a skit, which I cannot recommend to you, about germs. Okay, I cannot recommend that to you. I shouldn't have even said it, but what he spoke about the true, it was true. If he would have uh, fingered the Jesuit order, he would have been dead in 24 hours. And even Mr. Eric John Phelps said that once about Carlin. That Carlin actually said true things, but had, had he had fingered uh, the Jesuit order, he would have been dead just like that. But George Carlin gave a great example of this about the word shell shock, which is a military term, which apparently is about those in military fighting or whatever, where their nervous system has reached a, a condition where it's like about to go hairy, haywire, go all kablooey, okay? Used to be called shell shock. Now, Shell shock, what once was, okay, very simple and honest, direct, and that kind of stuff, is now called post traumatic stress disorder. Change the name of the condition, and you change the condition, okay? There, I, I have heard from people that they suffer from post traumatic stress disorder, and right away, me, I say, Are you a military veteran or something? It's like, no, I was a porn addict. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa wait a minute. You have post-traumatic stress disorder because you were a porn addict. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You might be sick, have the flu. You go to a doctor. No, you don't have the flu. No, what do you have? It's COVID. You have a runny nose, you have a sore throat, you have chest pains, you have diarrhea. I'm not, I'm not joking. Uh, it's, it's COVID. Oh. What, or you have heart failure. Oh, it was brought about on by COVID. Really? So, what, what are they doing? Okay. They're taking, I mean... All these already existing colds and viruses and whatnot that are out there like the flu, pneumonia, okay? It's not that anymore. It's all been put under the umbrella of COVID. Changing the name of the condition to change the condition. And they're doing that, to, why? For fear, to control, to manipulate, to bring about their end, okay? The end justifies the means. And what is the end of the Jesuit order? To establish, to set up that kingdom. For who? That man of sin. Some perdition. 
okay? That is their ultimate gain. That is their ultimate end, okay? And you can see examples of euphemistic language of euphonic or euphonical speak. What is that? Agreeable in sound. Agreeable, agreeable in sound, okay? <laughs> okay, and you can see all kinds of examples of this. All kinds of examples of this. Even in my lifetime, you can see it, and even in yours, okay? What these people are doing, they're changing the language. And like I told you before in the previous video, you take, you take a Webster's 1828 dictionary and you take a more modern dictionary, lay them side by side, pick a letter and start comparing them. You will do it. Do it. And the Jesuits, Catholicism has rewritten history. As it is said, history is written by those who hang heroes, right? Don't get me started on the hero thing, but, okay? And what happens, okay? You might have a cold or a flu, but no, they want to put it under the umbrella of COVID. Why? To instill fear. And if you instill fear, that's how you can control and manipulate the population. Absolutely. It's all about control. It's all about fear. Okay? That's why they are doing it. It's very cult-like. And if you don't go along with their system, you're a heretic. Hmm? You don't play by the rules of Catholicism, but you want to adhere yourself to the scripture, you're a heretic. You're a troublemaker. And remember, when they were doing the vax and unvax thing, even smoking Joe. You know, the, the, the vice to President Kamala, <laughs> okay? Uh, even Smoking Joe was playing the us against them mentality. Working for Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of all of the earth. The mother of all cults. The Poison Crown Psychological Operation? It's a cult, dear friend. It's a religion. It's a man-made religion, and it is a cult instituted by the mother of abominations. Mystery Babylon, the mother of all harlots. Hence, you can see it in her daughter. I mean, we listen, like I said, we listen to the news today, and you see new speak, as talked about in uh, 1984 by George Orwell, about replacing words, destroying words, and whatnot. Words are important. Words have meaning. But the, what are they doing? They are changing the narrative in order to change reality. Yea, hath God said? So by them changing words, they are in essence, I hate that word, but they are in essence saying that they are God who can speak things into reality by changing the definition of words and the way we speak. And me personally, I'm all about getting back to the scriptures. So, uh, Brad, you'd probably want people to go around talking in thee, thy, thou, and thine, and ye. Why not? <laughs> sure. I've done that before, you know. I've took a whole day and just uh, spake the best I could in Elizabethan, you know, and there's a way to employ that, you know, it's not just there because it sounds good, okay, there's a way to use true Elizabethan uh, language, okay, <laughs> or Elizabethan style, they argue and say that uh, the authorized version isn't really written in true Elizabethan, uh, it's written how the Lord would have it to be written, thank you very much, okay, but they are striving about words. They are striving about words. Okay? How do you know if what you have is either this biological weapon that the Jesuit order has put out there, or whether or not you have a common cold that has already, a common bug that has already been around for centuries? You wouldn't know. Why? Because they're changing the language to fit their narrative of reality. They're using euphemistic, euphonical speak, new speak, 
Okay? You know, people like to say that uh, Orwell was a prophet. No, he wasn't a prophet. He was just describing what they were going to do eventually. It wasn't a prophecy. Okay? It wasn't. No. Was George Orwell a Jesuit? I don't know. Was he a Mason? I don't know. Probably, at the least. At the least, he was a Mason, at the most a Jesuit. Okay? Because that, you know, he's he was describing what it was going to be like in the future. He wasn't prophesying. Okay? Because it was already laid out. This is what Satan has wanted to do. Okay? To get in the authorized version of the scripture. See, a cult, Roman Catholicism, is using its cult-like mentality to manipulate the masses with the poison crown psychological operation. Okay? Truly, using the tactics of devils. Truly, using manipulation, intimidation, fear. And you see the members of this cult, the doctors, the people who are on news, the people who are on the media, okay? Those are the players. Those are the ones who struck their stuff upon the stage and then are seen of no more. You know? Full of sound and fury to signify nothing, okay? Those are the ones. And of course, who's the head of this massive theater of deception? Oh, that'd be Arturo Sosa. Who's the head of Arturo Sosa? Satan. Okay? And of course, who works for Arturo, so Arturo Sosa? His fellow uh, underling, Francis. Okay? The visible head of all Catholicism. Not the actual head. He's the visible one. Boy, he's pretty charismatic, isn't he? Well, Arturo Sosa is like a dead corpse. Uh huh? And remember, Francis himself is a Jesuit, subservient onto Sosa. Okay? But, let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 1. Under verse 5. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. If you are someone under the servitude of another, whether it be at a job or you are actually under the servitude, a bond servant for someone else, and you are of the church of the living God, live as an example according to the scripture. So what? that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. It's the name of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and his doctrine be not blasphemed, okay? Walk as an example. Live as an example. If you are under the yoke, uh, a bondservant, and you are of the church of the living God, live as the church of the living God, so that they who are not will see and that, his, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Okay? And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Amen. 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 If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, Yes, there is such a thing as wholesome words and bad words. Yes, there is. Wholesome words. What are wholesome words? Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you got the Bibles who take out the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the red ones? Okay. Because they weren't in the oldest and best manuscripts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That come from Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's just wrong to give me a Bible. Yeah, that's why I read the scriptures. Yeah. Distinction, 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 brethren. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So, wholesome words, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, okay? Were the words of Jesus Christ. 
in the authorized version of Scripture. They're in the Bibles. Not all of them. Not all of them. They detract. Well, they weren't there to begin with. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Go bow down your head to your little puppet master, Francis. Okay? You're in a cult. You're in a cult, Brad. You're, you're an authorized version of the Scripture believer. Yes, I am. Yes. They refer to the sect of the Nazarenes, which they called heresy. Yeah, Paul talked about that before I think it was a Agrippa, right? Uh, this way, the sect of the Nazarenes, which they call heresy. Who's they? The Pharisees. Oh, who are the Pharisees today? The Catholics. Yeah, yeah. So if someone doesn't consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, wholesome words, words of scripture okay he is proud knowing nothing he is proud puffed up in his flesh okay but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmisings again the lord doesn't save you you're going to hell well not really no you will just be separated from god's presence uh, and you read in the book of Revelation of uh, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever in the presence of the Lamb. Okay? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or soul and that who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell who is able to destroy both soul and body. Doesn't say that he's going to destroy your soul in hell. No. No, you will be burning forever. No, you will just be separated from God. Sounds good to the ears, doesn't it? Sounds smooth. Change the name of the condition. Well, I'm not going to go to hell, just be separated from God's presence? I can live with that. <laughs> he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, Strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt, putrid, rotten minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And remember, gain is not just this. Oh, gain is your own little petty kingdom. Oh, gain can be a myriad of followers that will worship you, that will fall down at your feet, who you will send out to do your bidding while you sit on the throne. Uh, what is that? What's that term? Uh, plausible deniability? <laughs> well, I didn't know they were going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, plausible deniability. I remember Ruckman once said that um, he talked about how some of his people would go out and uh, upturn like uh, idols and stuff like that, you know, and um, he made this comment, he's like, I don't encourage that, but they had him as the example. Hmm. Interesting side note on that, just to, just to make, well, Ruckman is like, I, 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 I didn't, I, I, just an example that I brought up, wanted to bring up, I want, something I thought of, okay? But remember, gain is not just this. And when you, when you put in context gain as godliness, men of uh, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, you got to stand in awe of Roman Catholicism. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth the mother of all cults, the biggest, most powerful, and deadliest cult on the earth. And the disciples of all the daughters of Catholicism have a lot of traits. I mean, you can talk about the Jehos, you can take the, talk about the morons, you can talk about the sons of Ishmael who are snared by the Roman Catholic Islam, okay? Uh, you could talk about Taoism, okay? 
They all exhibit these cult-like men, uh, mentality and behaviors. Hmm. These are people who do not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 16. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they, they, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Subverting, suppression of the hearers. When someone has a cold, but you want to put it under the blanket of COVID. Hmm. Hmm. Is there any flu anymore? Hmm. Is there any pneumonia anymore? Hmm. Do you see? That's what they're doing. And if you don't go along with that, because you got to trust the doctors, you got to trust the experts. You got to trust the experts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. How much gain have you gotten? Sit there and count them all up, buddy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Words to no profit. You know, what would happen if you just left the language alone? Certain people might get the help they need if you didn't change the definition of a word. Okay? <laughs> For You're not stupid. You have a learning disorder. Okay? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Okay? And see, this is what the Jesuits, the cult of Catholicism, the cult of the poison crown, excels at. And we, as Church of the Living God, Christ's ambassadors, we are to study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing it, being dispensational. Okay? But shun profane and vain babblings. Babblings lent on to Babylon, where God confounded. Confounded and confusion are two different words. Mean two different things. Okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Godliness is separation from that. Okay? Ungodliness is to be yoked up with that. Okay? And you, you listen to any of that news media, man. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, go to Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 8 and 9. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city, the, Bibli the city of Babylon. Okay? Therefore, the name of it is called Babel. Because, here's the definition of Babel. Because the Lord did their confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And you look at verse 6 in Genesis chapter 11. You know, when man gets together, when everybody gets together and doesn't adhere to the scriptural distinctions and separations that our Lord would have. But if everybody gets together, what happens? They begin to build towers that reach up to heaven to make a name for themselves. Mm -hmm. Distinction, separation. Praise God for that. But no, Catholicism is the one that wants to bring everybody together. In Christ, salvifically, that's a totally different thing. There is neither Jew nor Greek, barbarian or Scythian, male or female. In Christ, in salvation, culturally, ethnic, ethnically, and stuff like that, that 
the, the, there's red re, red trees, there's there's pine trees, there's maple trees, they're all trees, but they're different types. Mwah! Praise the Lord for that. Celebrate it. But you got Catholicism wanting to, Satan wanting to bring everybody together. And see, what happens when man gets together? We build towers to make a name for ourselves, right? But here's what Lord, our Lord said of that very thing. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. That's what, that's what our Lord said of man when we get together. And remember, in the book of Isaiah, our Lord talks about how he will return to the people a pure language. A pure language. A language based upon scripture. A pure language. Satan, through the media, through his cult, Catholicism, and his cult, religion, right now, today. But you got to remember too, brethren, there's nothing new under, under the sun. What has been, has been, and it has known that it is man. There's nothing new under the sun. The only thing is that it's gotten worse. And they've created a biological weapon to make it seem, you know, because, hey, if you can't smell or taste, then it must be natural. But yet, out of four people, Every single one of them had differing symptoms, but yet they all couldn't smell or taste. That ain't, that ain't natural. That ain't God-made. That's man-made. Like we talked about in the previous video. Okay? Verse 16 in 2 Timothy chapter 4 again. Uh, 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 again. But shun profane and vain Babblings, babbling, root, babble, to confound, vain, babblings. <laughs> For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Change the name of the condition and you change the condition. Euphemism. Euphemism. It's a cult. It's the cult poison crown and this whole cult of the poison crown which is here there and they have instilled this religion uh, to what to bring about that man of sin the son of perdition to bring about that system to prepare you to receive the mark of the beast after we the church of the living God are redeemed okay go to Ephesians chapter 6 and, and, and again, I got to bring this up. You, you, you know, our our president, our president Kamala Harris, and her understudy Smoking Joe. Okay, they you all saw that they supposedly took the steal of the Jesuit Punyard people. People, I've gotten into email arguments with people over this of my own countrymen. Um, you really think that those two actually took? The steel of the Jesuit poniard. You really think that the leaders who on camera take the steel of the Jesuit poniard are actually taking what they're giving to the people? Do you really? Do you really think that? Do you? Do you? Oh, I feel sorry for you. I, I I really do. But see, Galatians chapter six. Okay. Galatians chapter six. See, and hence, it's a shoe in the flesh. It's a cult, okay? Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. He's talking about those going under the law. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. They don't practice what they preach. But desire to have you circumcised, join them, that they may glory in your flesh. Look at our numbers. Okay? Look at our numbers. Look at our numbers. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you cross land and sea to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold 
more the child of hell than yourselves. Yeah. And they themselves, like our Lord said, they won't. Uh, they themselves in Matthew chapter twenty-three, He said, they won't even lift it with their own fingers. They won't do what they speak. They won't practice what they preach. But no, they want a glory in your flesh. They want a glory in your flesh. It's a cult. This whole stuff. And y'all think this is done with, huh? You think the poison crown psychological operation has gone by the wayside? Uh, mandates, <laughs> mandates are going away. Except here in certain places, and of course in Illinois. Ugh. Ugh. I hate this state. I really do. I really do. Brethren in California, you got it worse than me. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, you, you live in California. I live in Illinois. We live in two of the worst states in the Union. Also, New York is a pretty bad place, of course, but... Uh, New York, Illinois, and uh, California. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, anyway, okay. Jeremiah, chapter 9. Jeremiah, chapter 9. Jeremiah, chapter 9. It's a cult. This religion, the poison crown, their use of euphemistic language trying to change the language that they may change the narrative that they may change reality. Ah. Thinking that they are gods, that they can speak things into existence by changing the way you speak and the meanings of words. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 25. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. No. Oh, you've got all this stuff. I'm going to pull down my barns and build greater so I can sit back, take my ease. I've made it. I've arrived. Here I am. I'm going to kick back. Yeah. Yeah. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth. How do you understand it? How do you depart from evil? How do you arrive at godliness and holiness? Through the scriptures. From fear of the Lord, it's the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from evil, it's understanding. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, excuse me. And to depart from evil, it's understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? But let him that glory, glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Not in the vain, petty kingdoms of men. It's a cult. It's a cult. By definition. Prove it to you, okay? We're going to look at this article here. Easy, easy, okay? The, the link for this article will be in the description box for you. Okay? Come on. Ah, that, stop that. Stop that, okay? Stop that. Interact, okay? I'm going to read this for you now. We're looking at this to show you that, number one, Roman Catholicism is a cult, and... Because Roman Catholicism is a cult, and they are the ones that are employing this, you can see all of this in what is happening today because of the poison crown psychological operation. Okay? That is the reason why we are looking at this. Okay? So, handout. What makes a cult? The information in this handout was compiled from the International Cultic Studies Association, which I have not looked at. I looked at this other stuff. I didn't look at this. Particularly the article, Characteristics Associated with Cult Groups, revised by Dr. Janja Laich and Dr. Michael D. Langone, 2006. A Wikipedia entry on Robert J. Lifton and Common Characteristics of How the Cults Operate 2009 on the Let Us Reason Ministries website. I've heard about them. They actually got some pretty decent stuff last I checked. Last I checked. Okay. What makes it a cult? 
The answer depends on how you define the word and to whom you are talking. For purposes of liberal religious examination, this is our working definition of a cult, a religion or a sect. And remember, like I said, they call us a cult because we adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures. We say that don't read the Bible, read the scriptures. Why? Because the Bibles come from Rome. Okay? We say that there is only one way. Why? Because God said that. They call us a cult. Okay? We're not the cult. Roman Catholicism is the cult. And you are seeing the daughter of Roman Catholicism in the media with their new religion, nothing new under the sun, but their new religion, the religion of the poison crown. Okay? A religion or sect generally considered to be the extremist, to be extremist or false under the guidance of an authoritarian, <laughs> charismatic leader for whom members exhibit, for whom members, charismatic leader for whom members exhibit fixed, even religious veneration. Mm. I can think of several um, religious leaders. You know, of course you say Jim Jones, uh, but other people who, who their people who follow them just make a total idol out of their certain leader individual, yeah, and then are are become their their patsy pretty much. Groups that meet this definition lend tend to have an escalating negative impact on the lives of followers. These groups exhibit many common characteristics. One charismatic leader is the group's sole authority on truth. Only this leader des decides or has the right to approve all policies and practices. Ex cathedra, talking about the Pope. Uh, Arturo Sosa has the personality of a wet rag, as a dead dog. Francis, on the other hand, he's very charismatic, isn't he? Yeah, and charismatic he is but speaking ex cathedra from the throne remember Catholicism teaches you that the Pope can put you in heaven or put you in hell to keep you out of there and stuff like that yeah talking about the Pope and Pope like people okay members are zealous oh yeah protective and unquestioningly committed to the leader now, put this in perspective for the poison crown religion. The people who are duped are zealous. You're not a scientist. I trust what the Jesuit doctors tell me. They're zealous, right? And they're protective. They know what's better. You're not a doctor. Did you go to school? How do you know these things, huh? Did you look? Who? Where did you get your research? Where did you get this? Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you know... You have you ever uh, come in contact with those who, you know, the vax versus the unvax thing? We have the science, we have principle, yada, yada, yada. Huh? Huh? Okay? Members regard the leader's beliefs and practices as truth and law. The leader affirms and enforces his idea. Questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or punished. Or punished. Hmm. Yeah. Don't don't question the Pope. Don't question the Pope. Don't question. Don't be like, oh, what's going on here? What's going on? This is insane. This is absolutely insane, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, um, I'm able to edit now. I had to stop this because I had to Help my wife with something but we've left off on questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or punished yes you have a brain you think about you know what they are pushing upon you about um, how all of a sudden they want to put everything under the umbrella of COVID it's like well wait a minute questioning their you know their social distancing the diaper the steel of the Jesuit punier oh no it's discouraged and punished if you don't go along with what they are instituting and with what they are instituting are contrary to the scriptures. 
The group's leadership dictates how members should think. And how do they do that? Through media, through predictive programming, okay? By a constant barrage of things, okay? That's how they're doing that with the media daily, okay? Repeating a lie often enough, long enough, sooner or later the people will accept it as truth. That's what Hitler even said, okay? The group's leadership dictates how members should think, act, and feel. Members require the leader's permission to change jobs, date, marry, or have children. And I've heard about that in several cults before, such as the Amish, even the Mormons, and the Jehos, and even in Islam and stuff like that. Um, I've even heard of that going on in certain Baptist circles as well. <clears throat> Very creepy, but for stuff of today, hey, you don't have the fun pass on your phone, huh? You don't have the, uh, you don't conform to their things, yeah? You can't hang out with such and so, such and such. You can't do such and such with so and so. Why? Because they didn't receive the steel of the Jesuit punyard. They're not playing by their dictates. Hmm? Yeah. Yes, the leader tells members where they can live and how to teach and discipline their children. Yes, and isn't that true with what's going on with uh, right now with the children? Hmm? The schools are training the children, not the parents training the children as it is commanded in the scriptures. People say, well, that's uh, teaching them religious things. No, the parents are to teach the children. Okay? Not the children, the parents. Okay? Send them off to school, to a Jesuit school, to get their mind polluted with evolution. Hmm. Yeah. The group uses public humiliation or punishment. Us against them mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Vax versus unvaxed. This is a pandemic of the unvaxxed. Remember Smoking Joe said that? Yeah. Yeah. You're not vaccinated. Oh, they humiliate you. Hmm? I tried to punish you? Oh, maybe putting you in jail, fining you, taking away things? Losing your job? Hmm? Debilitating work, sleep deprivation, or other practices to create group think and to suppress individualism and doubt. Look up group think sometime. Okay? Look up group think. You see a lot of what is defined as group think in the comment sections of lots of videos. Okay? You see group think in on YouTube and other platforms. Okay? The mob mentality. You know, kind of like people shouting, Great is Diana of the Ephesians for two hours. Because the multitude was confused. And who is the author of confusion? It ain't God. Yeah. Criticism or jokes about the leader or group are taken very seriously and likely punished. <laughs> I was emailed once, threatened um, by a Catholic, uh, obviously, that um, because when I talk about Catholicism, I, I let my temper out and I spit on Catholicism and everything that Catholicism stands for and all their popes throughout history. I spit on the popes. I spit on your religion. It's Satan's religion. I was threatened the one time. Uh, may God spit you out. How dare you spit on the vicar of Christ? That was, uh, no, I think that was how he or she worded it. Yeah, yeah. People will defend their Pope to life or death and do whatever they can to get into their Pope's good graces. Yeah. Criticism or jokes about the leader or, or group are taken very seriously and likely punished. By shunning, by humiliation, defamation, character assassination, and stuff like that, of course. Of course. But I've experienced it. You know, 
I spit on the popes. Amen, I do. And you, as the church of the living God, you ought to spit upon the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Especially the Pope. Especially the Pope. I've been threatened for doing so. <laughs> because remember, the Pope and Pope-like people are gods to their underlings. The Catholics see Francis as God. And Francis sees Sosa as God. And the God to Sosa is who? Lucifer. The group is elitist, claiming special status for itself, its leaders and its members. Elitists. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if Jesus had a church, it would be the biggest one. It's a good day to be a Catholic. <laughs> It's a good day. Praise Lord, I received the steel of the Jesuit poniard. I have seen online, in comment sections, people actually saying, praise the Lord that I got the steel of the Jesuit poniard and that I am protected. I have seen it. Wow. And that leads to an elitism. And we in Scripture are commanded to condescend of men of low estate, to be not high-minded in your own conceits. Because we're dirt. We're nothing. Who art thou? Hmm? Who art thou? The leader and members maintain theirs is the only path to truth and salvation. Now that gets twisted uh, quite often uh, for those who are of the church of the living God. But Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the answer. What is the answer? Jesus Christ is the answer. If the Son will make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Amen. Handout, behavior of abusers, those who are in line with the cult. Abusers can be hard to identify because at first they can be completely charming, skilled at gaining people's trust. They often seem approachable, honest, generous, and kind as they ease into people's lives and hearts. These are those that creep their way into houses and lead captive Silly women laden with sins? Hello? Yeah? Slowly, though, things start to go terribly wrong. Yes. Through time and consistency, you shall know them by their fruits. The abusive behavior escalates as the relationship advances, gradually becoming more controlling, demeaning, and aggressive. Only after the victim feels hopelessly trapped does the situation become unbearable. See, there again, what is the answer to this, to the cult of the poison crown? What is the answer? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, coming unto him broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon him, and may he save you. And how do you learn of this Jesus Christ, the God of the Scriptures? Through the scriptures, obviously. The authorized version. Okay? The authorized version. You learn of who God is through the scriptures. A Bible that comes from Rome removes the word of God. Removes his words. Takes away. You want the scriptures. Only Jesus Christ can set you free from the bondage. From the bondage that Mystery Babylon wants to put you under. It is essential not to let positive impressions blind one to a person's behavior as it develops over time. Like I always say, sooner or later, pew, they shoot themselves in the foot. The list below includes many common behaviors of abusers, though it does not include the most obvious forms of violence such as screaming or hitting. 
an extremely manipulative, predatory abuser might never physically harm a victim. Nonetheless, all behaviors listed are here should be considered violent. Insists, insist that their own thoughts and feelings be respected, but are not respectful of others' thoughts and feelings. Well, when it comes to truth, um, thoughts and feelings are ought to be weighed in the balance of Scripture. This absolute truth, the authorized version of the Scripture, is the is what the, this is truth. Okay, this is truth. Our thoughts and our feelings ought to be compared onto Scripture, not onto men, not onto organizations, not onto another man. For those who compare themselves among themselves are what? Not wise. Okay? Blame the victim for, for inciting abuse. You made me do it. Another form of <laughs> generally will not take responsibility. Constantly blame everyone and everything but themselves. <laughs> Those two go together. The, the woman that thou gavest me to be with, she did give me the tree and I did eat. Yeah, the old man. Keep people isolated by preventing or discouraging contact with friends or family. If they're not vaccinated, if they're not wearing the diaper, if they're not keeping social distance, you know, if they got a brain in their head, or if they are actually saved, born again, converted, of the church of the living God, but they, 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 they don't have the steel of the Jesuit poniard, you know? Yeah. Stay away from them. You can't trust them, because everybody could have it. They may be asymptomatic. <laughs> yeah. 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 And is that not what they talk about, what they preach through the religion, on the me in the media and in the news, even to this day? Like I said, you think this is over? Ha! Ah! Got another thing coming. Shove, push, block the way, or stand or behave in a threatening manner. Yeah, posturing. Mm -hmm. Threaten to take things away when you don't conform to Satan's agenda. Threaten to hurt people or their families or f their friends or family. Oh, that's never happened to me. <laughs> My life has been threatened. <laughs> My wife's life has been threatened. Ah, I have. I have actually been threatened before <laughs> on several occasions. S mostly when um, the Lord has led me to speak against Satan's church. And more recently, I've been threatened by uh, some people, mostly one, for certain disagreements. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but we won't get into that. We won't get into that. Discount other people's worth and opinions. Well, what is a man worth? We're dust. We're not worth anything. Okay? We're not. God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense. What is man worth? Some will say, well, he's worth the price of Christ's blood. Yeah? God chose to do that because he is merciful and kind, not because we were worth anything. Okay? The heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Where is this temple that ye build me? Okay? Mm -hmm. And discount other people's worth and opinions. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do not they do that who are of the cult of the poison crown? Hmm? We got science. The science back. The, the science is fraudulent. And what they teach as science is not actual science. It's a religion. <laughs> okay. 
Encourage dependence. Tell others they cannot get along by themselves. Socialism. Communism. Okay? <laughs> dependence upon the government. Dependence on man rather than Christ. Okay? They want you to be dependent on them. When we are, when you are supposed to be dependent to Christ Jesus through his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Control access to finances, telephones, television, computer cars, and other family resources. I heard about, I, I think it was Jack Hiles who did that kind of stuff. I think it was Jack Hiles, but I've heard about that in the Mormons and the Jehos and um, Islam and stuff like that. And of course, of course, the, uh, 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 what do you, you call those guys? The Amish do that. But there again, it could get to the point. If you don't have to steal the uh, uh, Jesuit poniard and you don't have the fun pass thing on your phone to prove such, oh, what could they do? They could take away your finances, huh? Take away all your stuff because you won't comply to their things. That is contrary to scripture to begin with. Hmm? See, this article, this little thing here, which I'll put in the description box for you. This is exactly what they are doing through the media. Which Roman Catholicism through her army, the Jesuit order, is doing through the, uh, through the media right now, through the news and through all their propaganda right now. This is exactly what they're doing with their religion of the poison crown. Okay? Criticize, devalue, insult, humiliate, and otherwise make people feel small, worthless, stupid, clumsy, helpless, unwanted, or inferior. Yeah, you're, you're not one of them. You're little people. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, I ain't part of that. But see, that's what they do. You know? <laughs> that's what they do. They make people feel like, well, hey, you know, you could have a, you could get back to normal. If you just go ahead and comply. <laughs> All this will I give thee if thou bow down and worship me. All shall be thine. And who said that? Satan, when he was tempting Jesus Christ our Lord, our God, our Father. His temptations, of course, were aimed at the flesh. Because God cannot be tempted with evil. But flesh can. Okay? Use, use intimidation or manipulation to get their way and control people. <laughs> the diaper, okay? Didn't need we say anything about that. Abuse or threaten to abuse pets. Hmm. Well, <laughs> if, if you're against the steal of the Jesuit poniard, then should Fluffy... <laughs> Um, get a variation of the steel of the Jesuit poniard for pets? <laughs> okay. Destroy or threaten to destroy things other people value. Your comfort zone. See. You want to get back to normal? Go ahead. Comply. Conform. Obey. If not... We might have to put you in a camp because it's for your safety and for the safety of others. We might have to put you in a camp with others like you in little dog cages. You know, the FEMA concentration camps that exist. Can't find them on a search. I couldn't. Then again, I don't know how to go about that. But yeah. Yeah. And I believe that. Oh, act, act distrustful. Intrude on privacy, e.g., barging in, reading mail. I remember that um, the government was taking upon it themselves to, if anyone talked against the uh, poison crown religion, 
that they would go on to like YouTube and uh, other things and try to spy on them to get information. They did this thing where they where they would do random calls to talk to people about getting the steel of the Jesuit Ponyard. Do you remember anything about that? Me and my wife both got calls about that. Mm -hmm. Barging in. Okay? Remember, here in America, the Constitution, that's a guideline. We're in a state of emergency ever since, uh, what was it, FDR? Okay? Even before that. It's never been rescinded. The Constitution is just a guideline. If that, it means nothing today. We're under executive authority of who? The Pope. And America is set up in a papal-style system. Okay? You, you think we have liberty here in America. We have more so than other nations, yes, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an illusion. <laughs> it's it is here in America. It is the exact thing of the suspension of disbelief. Okay, exactly. <clears throat> Withhold conversation or affection to control or punish shunning. And oh, I've heard uh, I've heard uh, things about you know like the Amish, um, who are really bad at shunning or good at shunning, I should say. The, the Jehos are, the Mormons are, Islam, okay? Certain uh, strict religious uh, organizations are like that, okay? Now, we are, you know, if someone walketh disorderly according to the scriptures, we are to note that man and have no company with him, but to admonish him as a brother, not to treat him as an enemy. These guys, you know, these people who fall for the religion of the poison crown, okay? They treat them as enemies. Holier than thou. <laughs> Have unpredictable outbursts of rage, of anger or rage. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Cite authoritative sources to justify their oppressive behavior. Quoting a religious text to justify physical punishment or assert superiority. Taking the scriptures out of context to suit your agenda. You see this demonstrated with people who preach tithing or will use the scriptures to guilt trip people into giving them money. Yes, yes. We've seen it's the Christian thing to do to get the steal of the Jesuit poniard and going to the Sermon on the Mount and other places in Luke to say it's the Christian thing to do. They do exactly that. They have done, you know. The Christians in the church building cite authoritative sources to justify their oppressive behavior. Jesus would have you to take the steel of the Jesuit upon you. See, all of this, all of this, what we just looked at, is being exhibited by the media, by the news, by the religious leaders, by the governments. Because why? They're all controlled by the Vatican. Okay? It's a cult. It's a religious cult. And remember, the all-seeing eye is out there. He's watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I wanted to uh, bring this up because I, I didn't speak. I, I made a mention of this yesterday uh, in the video, but uh, didn't uh, really expound or get into anything on it. But like I said, I, I just wanted to share that with you about uh, what, what's going on, you know. Brethren, people, this isn't going away. It's in a lull 
right now, if you will, at the moment. But it's not going. It's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. You just wait. They're going to ramp it up sooner or later. Again, they can't. They have to maintain it. They can't get away. Go away with it. Okay. They can't. And besides. Unfortunately, way too many people right now have already received the steel of the Jesuit Pioneer, and it's just a countdown. It's just a countdown. It's a religion. It's a cult. Okay. There is something out there. Yes, there is. But like we talked about in the previous video, I believe it's a biological weapon. But you got to also remember legitimate, like the flu, the cold, pneumonia, okay? What are they doing? They're taking it all together and putting it under the umbrella of COVID. So, there is no sick people anymore. They're all have COVID, asymptomatic. You don't have the flu, you have COVID. I don't have, you have pneumonia, you have COVID. You have a ingrown fingernail you have covid euphemistic language words are important people words are important words have meaning take heed you know this this holds true you want to you wanna make sure that you don't get or fall into line with any of this stuff? Don't watch TV. Don't listen to the news. Don't listen to the news. So, like I said, this is just an addition to the previous video. Um, something that should have been mentioned in that, but uh, was not. So this is, this is an addition to the previous video. So... But anyway, that's going to be it. I'm going to now put this together and upload this. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And please consider these things and please take warning. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.